Salams, you're watching Dispatches from India, the show on which we talk about the news stories that are making the most amount of conversation from an economic, social and political perspective. Life Insurance Corporation of India, first up, IPO'd on the 4th of May after the Narendra Modi-led BJP government at the centre decided to divest from, one, from the one-of-a-kind public sector insurance company. V. Sridhar, who is a member of the People's Commission on Public Sector and Public Services, has written extensively on the subject. He spoke to People's Dispatch about what makes LIC a unique company and how the government's decision to divest a part of its stake, as well as the terms of the IPO itself, will lead to losses for both policyholders and the government, making it one of, if not the biggest, privatization scams in the country's history. LIC is, is a unique institution. It's unlike any other life insurance company anywhere in the world. In that, and that's why I call this uh, sui generis in the world of finance. There is nothing like it anywhere in the world for the simple reason that when it was started in 1956, it was started, it functioned more like a cooperative institution in the sense that it was the policyholders who drove this organization, who built, who provided the risk capital for its expansion into the, into the giant that it is now. It is now among the, I think it's ranked fifth as in term, uh, it's the fifth largest insurer in the world. So, I mean, it, that, that stature, was achieved purely because of policyholders' contributions. So the government invested just five crores in, the, in 1956 until 2011, that is for 55 years of its 66-year 66 life, the government invested just this five crores in 1956. That's it. So the entire capital, the whole expansion, we have something like uh, 24 crore, that is 240 million policyholders. So that's a that's a very significant uh, proportion of India's population. So in a country where there was very little social security, life insurance was a very important uh, aspect of this in the sense that it offered some kind of a social security benefit for especially for people with low low levels of income. So. That was the, that is the importance of the Life Insurance Corporation, LIC, as it is known. Now, this is being converted into a private corporation. This IPO, this initial public offer that happened and the share was listed on the 17th, is basically a move. It's only about 3.5% uh, of, of the government stake has been uh, diluted in this first round. But this is by no means, it is just the beginning of the dismantling of one of the one of the biggest insurers, publicly owned insurers in the world. And that's, and so it will, what it, what it means is that it basically takes away uh, the rights of the policyholders and transfers them to the shareholders. The shareholder now being the government, but when it eventually moves to private hands, those will be the beneficiaries. So the losses on account, the losses that the policyholders suffer are the basis for which, a uh, basis on which the private shareholders will benefit. So it is nothing but an expropriation of a large number of, I mean, we're talking about 240 million people's policy, policyholders. So the, it, this is, this is perfect. I mean, this is purely expropriatory. And that's that's the that's that's really my fundamental objection to this whole process of this privatization through an IPO or a, by any other means. This is a classic case of expropriation of a large number of people uh, and favoring those who are you know who are going to be the new shareholders. And this has been done. I mean, I have termed it as the biggest privatization scam in India because it has been grossly undervalued. And that is the basis for uh, this thing. It's a huge scandal. Oxfam recently released a report entitled Profiting from Pain. The report tells us that a new billionaire was created approximately every 30 minutes since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The report was published just before the global elite descended on Davos in Switzerland to celebrate record profits during a period when people around the world, particularly in the global south, suffered immeasurably from both the virus as well as the failure of governments to respond to the crisis effectively and humanely. In India, the scale of the tragedy is both massive and, as we now know, avoidable. A subsequent WHO report on excess deaths during the pandemic states that almost four times as many Indians died in this period than any other country in the world. Journalist Anindo Chakravarti examines the report in an Indian context, concentrating on the biggest growth areas for billionaires – food, pharma and tech. The latest report from Oxfam, which has been aptly named Profiting from Pain, basically points out three industries where COVID has resulted in new billionaires emerging. The number of billionaires, even though the world economy slowed down, first actually nosedived and then slowed down, the number of billionaires has actually increased during COVID. And the uh, Oxfam report points out that there were three industries which have seen a disproportionate number of billionaires emerging. The first is food. The second is health, which is uh, pharmaceuticals and the third is tech and of course there's oil as well which has uh, many but most of them would have probably risen in the last year or so when oil prices shot up but look at what has happened food prices food inflation is at an all-time high right now and uh, it is being said that this is because of scarcity caused by the Russia Ukraine war but food prices have been going up for more than a year now right along with that what has happened is that the big food companies which the four of them, which together control 75 to 80 percent of the food trade in the world, they have made record profits. So it is their increased profits which has pushed up food prices across the world. They've taken this as an opportunity to increase their prices and people are going hungry. People are going hungry and have gone hungry in the middle of a pandemic. Look at pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals, especially those who made vaccines, have all come into the billionaire list this time and there is vaccine apartheid in this world right about 11.7 uh, uh, billion doses have already been given and the world adult population is about 5.6 5.7 billion so every adult in the world could have actually got two doses instead what have we got in the advanced world children who are not that vulnerable have got vaccines uh, many people have got three doses, booster doses, in some countries four doses, whereas in poorer countries only 13% of adults have got vaccinated. Why? Because companies, pharmaceutical majors have held on to their profits and refused to allow poor countries to produce these vaccines, mass produce them without that intellectual property right that it has to be transferred to them and that is the reason why in poor countries people are going without vaccines. And now look at tech. Even everywhere in a country like India, even the poorest uh, people have had, to, uh, send their ch uh, have had to give gadgets to their children, put them on the internet to educate them. And a large number of poor people have failed. They've not been able to do that. And in some cases what has happened is that civil society, somewhere governments have come in and helped them. But who has gained from their big tech? As everything has gone online, including everything we buy, social media, work from home, big tech has gained majorly. And these are the three which have produced billionaires. And billionaires have had the profits that the billionaires of the world have had in the, or their wealth, increase in their wealth in the last 24 months is more than what they had in 23 years. 23 years, 24 months. Look at that comparison. Every 30 hours during the pandemic, one billionaire was created. And this year, in 2022 alone, every 33 hour, hours, one million people will slide into, uh, into extreme poverty. That is what is happening. That is the level of inequality. And this can only be resolved if, if governments bring in progressive taxes, tax the rich more, put one-time windfall gain taxes. And by the way, this is not some... Uh, socialist conspiracy against the rich. This is what IMF, OECD and EU is already recommending. And finally, originating from the Michael Hills of Amar Kantak in Madhya Pradesh, the Narmada is the fifth largest river in India. And unlike the other major river systems in the country, flows from east to west, where it eventually meets the Arabian Sea. It's also considered one of India's holiest water bodies. 
Hundreds of thousands of pilgrims annually navigate the river's 1,312 kilometer length. Over the years, pollution, illegal mining, and other factors have led to massive changes in the river system. Our colleagues at NewsClick spoke to pilgrims on the riverside to understand how these changes are impacting lives. धारा तक रोक दिए हैं लोग हमें पानी का प्रवाह नहीं हो पा रहा है आगे जब वो आए थे जब ये डैम नहीं बना अच्छा ये अच्छा और बहुत जल था नरमदा जी का यहाँ से लेकर के यहाँ तक नरमदा जी का पूरा जल कहाँ से लेके कहाँ तक यहाँ ये पुल से लेकर के यहाँ अच्छा पूरे में जल था अब ये है नर्मदा जी बहुत छोटी दिख रही है डैम बन गया नर्मदा के किनारे 18 थर्मल पावर प्लांट जो प्रकोल्ड है उसमें से छह लगभग 6000 मेगावाट की पावर प्लांट तो बन चुके हैं है ना तो ये पूरे नर्मदा को राख से खाक बनाने की योजना है एनजीटी दिल्ली ने मध्य प्रदेश को नवंबर 2013 में तमाचा देते हुए ऑर्डर दी कि नहीं हो सकता है अंधाधुंध अवैध रेत खनन फिर भी सबका उल्लंघन करते हुए रेत खनन जो चल रहा है वो केवल मुनाफा खोरी है इसमें माफिया जुड़े हुए हैं और इनको सरकार का आशीर्वाद है तो रेत निकलने से पानी का जल चक्र खत्म होता है यमुना ऐसी खत्म हुई नर्मदा नदी जो है ये भारत की बहुत ही कम चुनिंदा नदियों में से एक है जो फ्रेश वाटर रिवर है फ्रेश वाटर रिवर में क्या विशेषता होती है तो पानी लगातार बहते रहता है उसका इम्पैक्ट क्या होता है की नर्मदा उन बहुत ही कम नदियों में से एक है जिसमे फ्रेश वाटर के कारण महासीर मछली जो है वो पाई जाती है ये गंगा में नहीं पाई जाती है यमुना में नहीं होती तमाम नदियों में नहीं होती लेकिन लेकिन ये नर्मदा की विशेषता थी यहाँ बार महासीर मछली पाई जाती थी अब इसी के कारण इस इस महत्व के कारण क्या हुआ कि मध्य प्रदेश सरकार ने उसको स्टेट फिश का दर्जा दे दिया आज स्थिति ये है की महासीर जो मछली है वो इंडेंजर्ड स्पीसीज में आ गई है और ये तीन से भी कम बची है जानते हैं क्यों और कारण जो है वो डेम का है क्योंकि डैम बनाने से पानी रुक जाता है जब पानी रुक जाता है तब वो फ्रेश वाटर नहीं बचा क्योंकि तो पानी बहता हुआ नहीं है इसमें डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन कम हो जाती है यदि पानी में ऑक्सीजन कम हो जाएगी फ्रेशनेस कम हो जाएगी नेचुरली उसके ऊपर जो डिपेंडेंट जो है वो मासी जैसी मछलियाँ जो है वो अपने आप कम हो जाती है और लार्जर इम्पैक्ट क्या पड़ता है पानी की जो क्वालिटी है वो तो लगातार गिरती जा रही है क्योंकि लगातार ये एक्टिविटीज चलती रही और जैसा कि जनसंख्या के साथ साथ एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एक्टिविटीज मानव जननी जो है वो गतिविधियां लगातार बढ़ते जा रही हैं तो उसका इम्पैक्ट ये पड़ेगा कि ये जो वाटर बॉडीज हैं जो नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज हैं वाटर रिसोर्सेज वो लगातार धीरे धीरे डेटोरेट होते रहेंगे और यहाँ तक हो जाएंगे कि ये पानी जो है वो हमारे आचमन को तो छोड़िए हमारे आपके जो है कपड़े धोने और नहाने जैसी चीजों काम भी नहीं आएगा That's all we have on this episode of Dispatches from India. For more details on all of these stories, you can head on over to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and also check out our sister company, newsclick.in. Uh, you can also follow us on all the regular social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.